It's the summer of love and the moon's in the sky, but it's out later because of daylight savings. I don't know how to finish this song or how to rhyme, so I'm just gonna say the title, Summer of Love. It's the summer of love. Not 12 nights of love, just to clarify, because some people might hear love twice and think, oh, is it that? But it's not, because that was earlier in February, and that wasn't summer. But this is in June, so technically it's the summer, even though there are some kids that still have to go to school, and even colleges, depending on what kind of college you go to and the region that you're in, you might actually still be in school, so it isn't technically summer. When these episodes are coming out, depending on when you're watching them, you might actually be in summer if you're watching Watching them later on during the month of love. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Summer of Love, and today we're doing another episode of All My Bullies. Uh, so this has been a lot of fun. Now, last time I died, so this time I'm not, so I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, best to ignore it for now and make it to my friend's place before I die. Of exhaustion. Yeah. Thankfully, the shortcut delivers me to the vicinity of her place quickly. Home sweet home for now. Yep, it's just as needlessly big as I remember. She's the only one living there, and it has like six bedrooms and three bathrooms. A pool, too! And each of her closets are the size of my own bedroom. Hmm, maybe we should discuss being roommates. At least for a time. Well, I'm too tired to work all that out in my mind right now. I walk up to her door and fetch a spare key from under the fake rock by the door. Wow, she really does have one of these. I guess it works? I let myself right in. Ah, oh, sweet solitude. Safety at last. I don't even make it upstairs. I pass out right on her couch, allowing the early morning to take over. Hmm. When I wake up, it doesn't feel like I'm alone. It must be my imagination. Eyes half open, I slide off the couch and onto the floor. My cell phone slips out of my pocket. Ah, yeah. Laughing, I turn over onto my back. I'm gonna have to write a lot of emails this morning explaining why my writing deadlines are gonna have to be pushed back. A Bowie destroyed my entire house. That'll go over well. Oh no. Don't worry about it. What's done is to... I jolt up. Oh! Oh, so this is... Oh, so this is life. Oh! So this is my life right now. How did they even get in here? Was I so tired that I forgot to lock the door behind me? Well, at least they didn't obliterate the place. If you're wondering, they let us in. The Martian motions toward the Goblet King. Were you the ones following me last night? No, but we have learned something about you from Ziggy. All the Bowies, I don't know what voice to do, because they all are, are Bowie. Seems I've caused you quite a bit of trouble. Let us make it up to you. Okay. That's one less voice I have to do. Okay, Ziggy destroyed my house, but what do the rest of you have to do with it? Oh god, you all are planning some kind of takeover, aren't you? See, this is why I hate humans. Just because we're not from here doesn't mean that we're out to take over, love. It's too much effort. Who says we haven't already taken over, Sarah? My name isn't Sarah. You guys were obviously following me. Am I supposed to just live with that? This isn't right. You're trespassing here also. This isn't my house. You know that already, don't you? God, I'm freaking out. Can you all just leave? What would that accomplish? Me keeping my sanity? Trust me. I know a thing or two about sanity. They call me Aladdin Say. Who's they? We can help you with your current predicament, though I have some questions for you. Do you believe in your own power? Will you give yourself over to me? What? Can you stop thinking about yourself for two seconds? Ugh. Looks like I really need to deal with this right now. We can all stay here until we work something out. Bowie's quickly disperse among my friend's house. Guess they're ready to become their home. Don't they have any place else to be? Though I guess it could be worse. After all, they are Bowies. Um. Oh! 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 Hey, don't get too comfortable! Uh, better tackle things one at a time. Oh, I get to speak to them! Oh! Let's go in order, shall we? Let's start with Ash's Bowie. I turn to the strange... Pierre? Pierre? Pierre, Pierre, Pur, 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 Pur looking Bowie, or rather to where they were just standing. They're not there anymore. Hmm, they must have walked into the side room when I wasn't looking. Hello, come in. Ground control, come in. Um, I don't know if this is normal for Bowies, but I'd 
better ask to be sure. What are you doing? Contacting ground control. Is that shoe magical? What shoe? Oh, you mean this? No, this is more than that. It's really quite a disguise, isn't it? What? Well, how's it working out for you? Not great, actually. I pull out my cell phone. What's their number? I could just call them for you. Number? You, uh, need a number to use the phone. Oh. The boy puts down their shoe phone with a dejected look. Oh, come on, don't act like that. Can't even get this right, can I? Huh. Listen, whoever it is you're trying to contact, I can do it for you. Shoe or no shoe. Uh, what did you say it was again? Ground control? Um, are you some kind of astronaut? Do you work for NASA? Maybe they're acting so strangely because they hit their head re-entering the atmosphere. Though that didn't seem to affect Ziggy much. Uh, huh, forget about it. It's not important. Huh? Really? You look pretty desperate just now. You wanted to help out, right? You're not going to be able to do that if you're so worked up about this. I said it's fine. The Bowie quickly walks back into the main room and toward the door. I pursue them. Hey! They step out suddenly. Did they want to stay? I would have made them leave earlier if that were the case. Hmm. I had better follow them. The boy was out of sight when I went outside. I had an idea of where they had gone. Further along the coast is a pier with a lighthouse heading it. It's a beautiful spot. On normal days, I make my way over there in the evening time. On normal days, I make my way over there in the evening time. In the morning, it looks just like sunset. It evokes an aura of romance, but it's a cold morning. There they are, staring at the very end of the pier. They're releasing a dove into the sky. That is so Bowie. That is just... The amount of Bowie that is, is it's just it's very, very Bowie. Bowie, didn't you say you had something to ask me? He doesn't respond. I didn't mean to push you earlier. I'm sorry. If you don't want to ask anymore, why did you rescue me? Why? That's a silly thing to ask. You were going to die. But what did it matter to you? I wish they didn't ask me that. I mean, what else could I do? Seriously. Listen, it'd be really irresponsible to watch you die, okay? And no one else could help you in time. If I don't take action in dire times, what does that say about me? Responsibility, eh? Besides, there was something about you. I suppose you're wondering what I was doing out there. Wondering, yes, but I don't have to know. It's okay now. They turn away for a moment, then look back at me. A hopeful look of small, growing warmth. I had a lot of lingering guilt about my past hanging over me. I was a performer back where I come from, see? And in the course of performing, a lot of good things happened to me all at once. But I squandered it all and was left with nothing. I came here to clear my head, but it was for naught. I thought I was stuck out here with little recourse. I was just being myself, but I didn't know where one line ended and the other started. Then I ended up in this place, and I wandered out farther, farther into my thoughts, but then you arrived. I could have perished. It's a marvel that I live now. I feel like I've got a whole new start now. Well, that's sweet. It's all thanks to you. Rescuing me, it is an act of love. That's a little much. No, I, I mean it. I've escaped the darkness, thanks to you. I was a little frustrated earlier about the phone. I just wanted them to know that I'll be okay and that I won't be coming back. I want to be finally done with that chapter of my life. I smile. I'm happy for them. I think we really accomplished something today. What should I do now? So I'm going to take their hand uh, because I feel like kissing their head is a bit too forward. So I think I'm going to go with uh, taking the hand. I take the Bowie's hand, said Bowie. You don't have to go through hard things alone. Thank you. Let's go back. I'll make sure everything's resolved for you. I would love that. When we got back, we attempted to contact to ground control together. Of course, we ended up being hooked up to NASA, and I didn't think it's such a good idea to let them know I'm living with Bowie's right now, as I don't want my friend's house to turn into Area 51. So, we hung up. The Bowie now sleeps in a room beside the main bedroom. I told him I'll never be far if he ever wants to talk. Oh, okay, that was sweet. Uh, so we're going to end things here, and uh, next time I think we're going to go for Thin White Duke and The Martian. Uh, thank you all for watching so much. I'm happy that we got through one Bowie, and I, and I say going through two because I feel like Thin White Duke is going to be pretty silent, so I think we can tackle two. But, I mean, we'll see what happens next time. So thank you all so much. Love you guys. Take care. Hope you had fun. And this was a very interesting episode of Summer of Love, all my Bowies. Uh, yeah, so, all right, guys. Take care. See you. And I had a lot of fun, too. So I really hope you guys did, because this was very sweet. Um, all right, so see you guys.